Okay, it's uh, October 22nd, 2014, and there's um, a whole lot of hidden geoengineered aerosols going in west of California, and this is strictly to maintain the California and Nevada drought. And I just saw on the news, uh, national news, about how black bears in Nevada are having to come into town to find water and food. And uh, because of those guys, I'm going to show this video that... Uh, to me, it's very, very strong evidence. We'll let you be the judge. But there's this small postage stamp area of heavy chemtrail aerosols sprayed right at daybreak. Let me let the uh, sun rise here. This is uh, October 27th on the West Coast. Now, they're spraying right here at daybreak. And once the sun is up a little bit, now we can see it. Now, let me zoom in. And that's not the only area they were spraying. But... This, uh, these vertical bars here hung together all day today and by evening are basically uh, on the California coast. And there also is another area that they sprayed and that's to the west here. Uh, the jet stream right here is moving in this direction here so they spray perpendicular right here. They've sprayed some more. And these again these are designed to quell any storm activity in this area. And these, these ones here are designed to not only stop the storms in this area, but also to hold this uh, powerful jet stream flat. Because these clouds are trying to uh, coil up into a low pressure and then move into California. So this... Uh, these aerosols here and here are designed to maintain this high pressure down here. Let me uh, jump ahead in time. You can see this animation. So here's our, our original patch of uh, aerosols. And they're moving due east. And they're actually holding together. Which is something these chemtrail operators do not want to see because it allows us the opportunity to look at them and study what's going on. So, you can see there's some clockwise rotation here. This is a high pressure. And the significance of this, let me show you the humidity maps, quite interesting. Okay, here's 850 millibars, relative humidity on October 22nd. And the browns, it, the brown is dry air, green is humid air. So if we look at California, this is 5,000 feet, what we see is it's very dry in the south and Nevada is very dry. A little bit of humidity uh, to the north. 7, 000, uh, 700 millibars, 5,000, uh, sorry, is 10,000 feet altitude. Very dry. 500 uh, millibars, 18,000 feet very dry. We're starting to see some humid air up here. And then the last one's 30,000 feet. A ton of humid air up here. A lot of humid air, but there's no instability to cause storms. So that is the key here. That they can have that humidity pass over California, but they don't want anything to destabilize it to where it actually falls as rain. And that is why they are doing this with the jet stream. <clears throat> okay, so here's the high pressure I'm talking about. And they want to maintain that and grow that. In fact, I can show you the uh, uh, time-lapse jet stream prediction. Now here is the future forecast of the jet stream. Now here's California. Here's this giant arc of very fast jet stream wind. If we step through, let me just uh, zoom in so you can see better. Okay, this is the present, and now we jump ahead. 6 hours, 12 hours, 18, 24 hours. 24 hours this thing has not changed at all. It's because they're, by, by creating this hot air layer on the south side, they inhibit any uh, tendency towards uh, low pressure buildup down here. 30, 36, 42, 48 hours. 48 hours, two days straight, they're able to hold that. And then 
uh, by since they're holding it the rest of the jet stream starts to pile up like a train wreck and this is, again is the polar vortex and then uh, after 66 hours we don't really know what's going to happen but um, go back show you the current here's late in the afternoon and we can see our chemtrail little little postage stamp has smeared out let me zoom in this is late in the day pretty much sun's about to start setting and here is the original patch of aerosols and they have they have caused this entire area to dry out and then here's a bunch of more that are laid in this direction because the jet streams curving around here so again they lay it, lay it perpendicular uh, I can put a little color on there hopefully it'll help a little uh, maybe maybe we can see that a little better computer slow yeah we can probably see that a little better you can see the but you know that the thing about uh, color that's nice is that we can see how how the hot air layer affects the the possibility of clouds thunderstorm color curve okay and I'm gonna unzoom and now we have okay so we had aerosols laid here and look how this is dried out we have aerosols laid here and look how this is dried out so that's what they do it's a capping inversion it's a hot air layer let me look at the water vapor map and show you some more. Uh, let's see how about this one? Okay. No. And uh, water vapor, in this case, is showing up the, the aerosols really nicely here. This is earlier. You know, for people that don't realize this is going on, I mean, it's really uh, quite a horrific thing to see. These are all man-made right here. These are man-made. And again, this is going to build this high pressure so they can uh, maintain the California drought and freeze out the east, eastern half of the U.S. And the jet stream in the eastern, eastern half of the U.S. is just insane. It's just changing wildly. It's just whipsawing back and forth. Okay, these are definitely aerosols. And then Here's the little patch we saw this morning, how it's held together and um, moving eastward, inhibiting the rain as it goes. And I do believe this is going to be the latest one, late in the afternoon. And uh, I'd also like to show you the weekly participants. Uh, well, let me just show you the. This is the stakes here. This is the stakes. I showed you the dry air over this part of California. Well, look at this. This is exceptional drought here. Unbelievable drought. And it extends in, into bear country here. And uh, they're, they're maintaining this. This is a maintenance exercise. These aerosols today are principally being used to reinforce this drought and continue it. Um, I wanted to show you the uh, precipitation totals for the last week, and this is not, this is, uh, here's precipitation totals for the last week, and you can see how California, this is from October 15th to October 22nd, the total precipitation, and look how California has been left out. This light blue means nothing, quarter of an inch, that doesn't even matter when you're in a drought. Hits the ground and ten minutes later it's evaporated. So uh, it looks like uh, this little part of California got about uh, over an inch. That's just barely in the corner. Just terrible. So um, the amazing jet stream uh, at the surface we have this high pressure. This is what the harp operators need to maintain if they want to keep the polar vortex going. And this giant piece of energy here is still what's left over from uh, Vong Fong and uh, Fen Phone, these two Japanese hurricanes. This energy is still hanging around uh, southern Alaska. 
So it has totally messed up their plans to keep the polar vortex going. But uh, this is an effort to get it back into condition. And sea level pressure later on, we definitely see high pressure here. And then the jet stream. This is 7 a.m. They never updated in the midday. But you can see this is high pressure. This, they're not labeling it, but this is high pressure. And this is an extremely powerful jet stream. When these pressure lines are this close together, that is a powerful wind. In fact, uh, it's, it's over 100 miles an hour. And the rest we don't care about. <clears throat> so anyway, this very clever chemtrail operation that they did this morning. You know, if you hadn't seen this right here in the morning, and th you would not realize that this stuff later in the day, this stuff here, is man-made aerosols. But the California drought is man-made. Uh, Nevada is suffering terribly. And it may not look like powerful proof to you guys, but this is very powerful proof to me. And uh, it really hurts me seeing those bears suffering the way they are. And again, this is most almost certainly to do with the uh, Chicago Mercantile Exchange weather futures contracts. Somebody is droughting out California and Nevada for big bucks. And you cities who are being droughted out, the city managers need to disclose to everybody uh, what kind of weather futures contracts they have entered into. Because um, those premiums that you've paid for these contracts are being stolen from you by these weather control operations. So that is your homework assignment. If you're in one of these cities listed on that uh, CME group um, cities list, and I'm talking all the big cities, you know, Sacramento, LA, uh, Portland, Vancouver, the big cities have weather options traded on them every day. And it is your assignment to find out what your city manager or CPA or city attorney or whoever has has uh, signed up for because that is the thing that makes your city a target for this uh, illegal racketeering, insider trading, uh, criminal fraud. Okay? And let's do it for the bears. <laughs> if, if for nobody else, do it for the bears. Thanks.